Hi everyone, and welcome back. In this video, we'll be discussing a very special type of series, geometric series. Now, if you happen to run into one of these guys out in the wild, you are very lucky, because as you'll see, we can tell you pretty much everything about a geometric series that you would ever hope to know. We can easily test whether or not they converge, we can find their partial sums, we even have a formula for adding up the whole series. They're pretty much the friendliest examples of series that you'll ever hope to find. So what is a geometric series? Well, it has a very particular form. It starts with some initial term, a, and then to get the later terms, you multiply that a by a constant r over and over and over. So the next term would be a r, then a r squared, a r cubed, and so on. r is the common ratio between consecutive terms. So if you take any term and divide it by the term that came before, you get r back. Not only are these series quite nice to work with mathematically, they also show up in a variety of real-world problems. Suppose, for example, that you have a ball that's dropped from a height of 2 meters. After each bounce, the ball loses some energy and comes back up to two-thirds its previous height. The question is, how much distance does the ball travel while descending? To figure that out, you'd have to add up these quantities. 2 meters at the start, then 2 thirds times 2 meters, then 2 thirds times that quantity, and so on you'd end up with this infinite geometric series. The first term is 2, and the common ratio is 2 thirds. Now I mentioned that geometric series were particularly nice, right? They're so nice that we can actually find a precise formula for their nth partial sums. To do this, we use a little trick. The trick is so cute that I actually don't remember the formula for the nth partial sum. I just remember the little trick for deriving it. We start with the equation of the nth partial sum that you see here, a plus ar plus ar squared, all the way up to ar to the n. Then we multiply both sides of this equation by r. When we do this, something magical happens. Every term in our partial sum is going to take one step to the right. a becomes ar, ar becomes ar squared, and so on. Let's write this down. When we multiply by r, on the left we have r s to the n. And on the right, I have AR plus AR squared, all the way up to AR to the N, and I have one more term now, AR to the N plus 1. Why would multiplying by R be helpful to us? Well, notice that between line 1 and line 2, we have a lot of terms in common. Aside from this first term in line 1 and the last term in line 2, all the terms are repeated. So if we take the difference of these equations, most of the terms are going to cancel out. On the left, we're going to have 1 minus r times sn. And on the right, most of the terms die, and we're just left with a minus ar to the n plus 1. Well, remember, the goal here is to find sn, and we found it. Just divide both sides by 1 minus r. We find that sn is equal to a, 1 minus r to the n plus 1, divided by 1 minus r. And there you have it, a nice compact expression for the nth partial sum. Ah, okay, if we know an expression for the nth partial sum, we can take the limit as n goes to infinity to try to figure out the sum of the entire series, and in particular, decide when our series converges and when it diverges. So what happens to this expression when we let n go off to infinity? Well, notice that the only n appears here as an exponent of r. So the outcome of this limit is probably going to depend on the value of r. In fact, this will be the case. So let's first pretend that r is a very small number, like, say, 1 half. When you start taking powers of a number like 1 half, that number is just going to shrink and shrink and shrink, and it will tend to 0 as n tends to infinity. So this whole numerator term is actually going to tend to a. That's not something that will happen just for 1 half. It'll happen for any r that lies strictly between minus 1 and 1. So let's write this down. If the absolute value of r is strictly less than 1, then as n tends to infinity, my partial sums are going to approach a in the numerator divided by 1 minus r. Ooh, would you look at this? A nice finite quantity. If the absolute value of r is less than 1, then the limit of my partial sums exists, and it's equal to this value. It's telling me that my series is convergent and is equal to a over 1 minus r. Pretty amazing. We'll now consider the other possibility, that the absolute value of r is bigger than or equal to 1. What can we say in this case? 
Well, to answer this question, take a look at a general term in our geometric series, a times r to the n. As we let n go off to infinity, what happens to this term? Well, if r is bigger than 1, this term is just going to grow and grow and grow. It's not going to tend to 0. If r is less than minus 1, well, this term is going to grow and grow and grow, but flip back and forth between positive and negative. Again, it doesn't converge to 0. If r is equal to 1, this term is constantly equal to a, which is not going to converge to 0. And if r is equal to minus 1, this term is going to flip back and forth between a and minus a. Again, it doesn't converge to 0. So in all cases, the limit as n goes to infinity of a r to the n is not 0. What can we conclude? Well, if the terms in our series don't go to 0, according to our test for divergence, the gatekeeper, our series is going to diverge. And that, folks, is pretty much it when it comes to the convergence of geometric series. Let's summarize these results on the next slide. So here it is, your summary on geometric series. If your common ratio r is less than 1 in absolute value, your geometric series is going to converge. Not only that, we can actually tell you the value of the sum. It's going to be a, the first term, divided by 1 minus r. So if we think back to our example of a bouncing tennis ball on the first slide, there we had a first term of a equals 2 and a common ratio of r equals 2 thirds. So according to what we've just discussed, since r is less than 1 in absolute value, the geometric series should converge. The sum of that series is given by 2 over 1 minus 2 thirds, which I'll let you verify is equal to 6. The ball will travel 6 meters while descending. If instead the absolute value of your ratio is bigger than or equal to 1, then the geometric series diverges. Regardless of the convergence, we can always compute the nth partial sum using the formula that you see here. This is what makes geometric series so special and so friendly to work with.